Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful holiday and I'm excited to get to art making. I have a great project for you. It is called Eggbox Creature Portraits and here are two examples. So using egg boxes and materials you can find around the house, we make these fantastic fantasy portraits where you let your imagination run wild. So in this one, I have got a unicorn. You can see now this is called a relief portrait. It's called a relief portrait because part of it is two dimensional, the background and the body, and part of it is three dimensional, 3D. So it has a three dimensional aspect in the head and a bunny jumping out of form, coming through the long grass. So don't these look amazing? And you can make these at home. You can make as many as you like. For this particular portrait, this example, I thought about making a unicorn and I tried to imagine the story behind the unicorn. So that's what I want you to do. When you are thinking about using an egg box to create the face, the head of your creature, when you are thinking about your creature, I want you to imagine the story behind your creature and maybe spend some time with your mom or your dad and look at some of the backgrounds because you would need to design a background for your creature as well. It's not just the creature. So my unicorn, you can see, is quite strange. I decided to put my unicorn have this blue mane that comes over the shoulder and the side of that, my unicorn should be wearing a suit, like a character out of a book, out of a storybook, with a tie and a blazer and a poppy in the pocket. And then I imagined it on a very sunny afternoon in a landscape with rolling mountains that disappear into the background and fields of poppies behind. So maybe you want to sit with your mom or your dad when you design your animal or your creature. Perhaps you want to do your favorite animal um, and there would be an appropriate or suitable background for your favorite animal. Or perhaps you want to design or invent a creature like I have, this unicorn in a suit. And then you would want to consider the background for, for that. So you could sit with your mom and your dad, and you could go through magazines or look at images on Pinterest and get some ideas of what background would be suitable for the creature that you want to create, this creature that you can imagine. So there we have it. I'm working on a third example for you. I will post that or send it to you as, um, as it comes along. It is far more complicated than these two and it will probably take me a really, really long time. So think about what you want to do. Start putting some of your ideas down. Decide what kind of animals interest you. They could be existing animals, mammals, reptiles, birds, or they could be fantasy creatures. A dragon, which is the next example that I'm going to work on. Um, or something from under the sea and that is entirely up to you. Obviously if you're doing something under the sea you want to consider the background for that. You'll use blues in your background, maybe a coral reef. Um, once again, let your imagination run wild and see what fantasy creatures or favorite creatures you can come up with. So now that you've seen some examples of the egg box creature portraits, let's have a look at what we need so that you can gather up your materials. First things first, you will need egg boxes. So get yourself an egg box and you will notice that the egg boxes come in very different shapes and that might be useful. So the shape of the egg box or the inside of the egg box is going to influence the way that your portrait comes out. Scrap card. I use recycled cardboard from boxes because it's corrugated and it's quite stiff and thick. So any old um, packaging boxes that you can cut up and you can recycle your materials instead of using new card. Of course you can use new poster card, but recycle card. So your egg boxes and your card, that's important. You might want some scrap paper to do your designs on. So scrap white paper, um, scissors. Scissors are important. So you'll need scissors. I really like these small detailed scissors. You can cut some fine details. A selection of brushes. You don't need a lot of brushes. I generally use two brushes for an entire project. And then you will need acrylic paints. So these are water-based paints, but they are not watercolor paints, they are acrylic. So they will say student acrylic on them, or perhaps poster paint or gouache, and you can get them in a whole range of colors. Of course, the colors you really need are black, 
white, and your primary colors, which are blue, yellow, and red or magenta. So those are your primary colors. If you have your primary colors, those five colors, you'll be able to mix any colors. But sometimes it's useful, it makes your life a little bit easier if you already have some pre-mixed colors, like you can get in a set like this. They also come in bigger tubes like this. So as long as you have an acrylic paint or poster paint, it'll work really well. You can use watercolor paints, water paints, um, but they don't cover cardboard so well. You'll see that the color of the board will show through because they're translucent. You will need a marker or markers, sharpies, pencil to do your designs. And then when it comes to glue, there are two different types of glue that you can use. You get a glue stick, which is great for paper, sticking paper, but it's not really good for card, which is quite heavy and rigid. And you can get a craft glue, which I'll be using, or a white glue, like a wood glue. So that is very good for sticking card and holding stiff or firm surfaces together, rigid surfaces together. You will need a ruler. I use a palette for mixing. You can see I do a lot of mixing. This is my last palette from one of the examples. So there's a lot of colors mixed on here, but because they were watercolor paints or acrylic paints, they dry very quickly and you can just mix on top of them. So I like to use these plastic disposable plates because they're cheap, they're easy, and they work fantastically well. Getting a bit of paint all over the place. Um, you may want, or well, you will need a cup or a jar for water to clean your brushes. Some paper napkins to clean your brushes as well. And it is useful to use old newspaper to cover the surface that you're working on to prevent you from messing. So those are the materials, that is the stationery that we require to do this project. So gather it up and then we will start with step one, how we design our egg box creature portrait and we can get started. The first step to creating your egg box creature portrait is to design the face or have an idea of what creature you want to make. And for this, you will need your egg box, you'll need the card that's going to make your background, and this should be roughly 11 centimeters by 15 centimeters, so it's not very big at all. So your card for the background, your egg box, and your scrap paper, and a pencil or a marker. There really is no limit to the creatures that you can make out of an egg box for your egg box creature portrait. Use your imagination to design whatever you like. If you look at this one, the head of this unicorn that I started, to something very complicated if you want to challenge yourself, like this dragon's head that I am busy working on, all from the same egg box. But it starts with looking at the egg box. You'll need your egg box. I've already told you that, but we can cut that piece out. <laughs> Start by looking at your egg box and trying to imagine the shape of the head in the form of the egg box. Use your marker and try and draw it in. Now, you will have to imagine where you want the ears because you'll need to cut those out too. So let's say I wanted to make a fox. I might see the fox's ears there. That would be the back of the head. I would know where I want to put the eyes or I'd have an idea of where I want to put the eyes. And you can use your scrap paper for that to draw out your design before you commit to the egg box and start to cut it out. And once you've drawn it on, you don't have to draw with too much detail and you have an idea of what you want to do. Take your scissors and start to cut the egg box out. Now something to consider, egg boxes can be tricky to cut. So if you're working with sharp scissors and you're struggling with this, or you're not really confident, um, you can always ask your mom or your dad, or an older sibling, a brother or sister, to give you an adult, to give you a hand in cutting out 
your design. There's nothing wrong with asking for help, having someone cut your design out for you. Cut away the excess paper until you have the shape of your head cut out like this unicorn. So bear in mind when I cut the unicorn out, I left the ears on and didn't cut them off. And I kept the hair, which I folded back over the top of the head. And I generally leave a little tag at the bottom that I can fold back because that is going to help me stick it down to my final image. Now, if you don't like the long shape of the inside of the egg box, you can always turn it over and use the shape from the back. As you see in this creature portrait of a little bunny in the long grass. So it's up to you to use your imagination. See what you can see. Sometimes when I look at this, they look like eyes. Maybe I'd like to make big owl eyes out of this. But see what you can see in it. Design it. Cut it out or have your parents or older siblings help you to cut it out. Put all your parts aside. Remember 11 centimeters by 15 centimeters. For your background, put everything aside and then in the next step we will start our painting process. When it comes to painting, you are going to want to work in two stages, the head and the background separately. But you will need to have an idea of what you're doing in the background before you start to paint it. So you can see I painted the head first. I painted the background separately and I made sure to overlap the background where the head is going to go so I don't have any open spaces. So when the head goes on, when I stick the head on with glue, the landscape or the background will seem to be behind the image in the front. So we create the sense of foreground, middle ground and background, which we've covered in class already. So you do want to work in two stages. But before you start painting and deciding on the colors you're going to use, what you want to do is take the head that you've cut out. So I'm going to use, once again, this dragon as an example. And you want to imagine where that is going to go in your background and what the rest of the body is going to look like. Hold it down on your page, let me not use a pencil, use a marker rather. Hold it down on the piece of board that you've cut out, which will make up the two-dimensional part of your portrait. And then start to draw in what you would expect your creature is going to look like. So perhaps my dragon will have a long neck and perhaps the dragon will have scales like the underside of a snake or a crocodile. And then the dragon's wings don't have to all fit in to your image. And maybe in the background I will have... So I know the head is going to go here, and that's not a bad idea. Is to give yourself an idea of where the head is going to go. Maybe you're going to overlap it anyway. So I know the head is going to go around about there. And maybe in the background, I imagine a mountain with a castle. And windows that I'll paint with bright yellow to make it look like lights. And the mountain comes down. And maybe I'll have a big moon in the sky. And I can have clouds in front of the moon. Remember, you're going to paint over all of this. So don't be afraid to make a bit of a mess with your drawing. It's just a design. So now that I know what my background is going to look like, once the head gets stuck on, I can either start painting the head or I can start painting the background. But you want to complete the entire background before you stick the head over. So once we compile the entire image. If I go back to the unicorn, 
can see the detail of the background. My frame is separate, which will get stuck over. And then the head will go on like that. And if you're going to do something very complex like this dragon, which is difficult, but if you want to challenge yourself and perhaps your mom or your dad wants to try one or your older brother or sister wants to try one, I suggest you keep all your pieces separate. So for this dragon, you can see all the separate pieces that I'm already painting, all made out of egg boxes, cut it out of the egg boxes the same, that I will use to put together and I paint them before I stick my dragon together. So these will be the scoots down the back of the dragon, which will be red. This will be the dragon's tongue, which will go inside the mouth. But first, I'm going to put these teeth in the bottom. So this is getting really complicated, I understand. And you don't have to work with this kind of detail. But if you want to try, look how great that looks. Then the tongue will go in. Oh dear. Now obviously all of these bits I will eventually stick together with my craft glue so that it doesn't fall apart again. But attention to detail can really make your creature come alive. You see that? It looks great. And these will be the teeth that go into the top. So those teeth will go inside on the top. But can you see how I have painted all of these parts and I've kept a little plate for myself separately so that I know when it comes to putting it all together at the end, I have all the parts that I need. They are painted, they're ready, and then it just takes a little bit of glue and a little bit of patience to construct my egg box creature portrait, depending on how complex I want it to be. Finally, it is time to put our portrait together. I have my parts, my background, my frame and the head, and all the paint is dry. For this, I'm going to use a PVA glue or a craft glue. You can use a white glue. Remember, glue stick you can use, but it is gonna struggle with the card because the card is so heavy and rigid. So I'll use this craft glue. And then, remember how I left the tag at the back of the head, so this is where this comes in really useful, very handy to stick it down. Apply a little bit of glue, not too much, you don't want to make a mess now. Not over your beautiful painting that's taken you so long to create. Rather use less glue, and if it doesn't work, you can add a bit more than putting too much glue on, making a big mess and ruining all of your hard work. So you can see I only put glue where I think the head is going to touch the background. And not more than I need. Very carefully decide because once you stick it down, you can't move it. Decide where the head should go. Onto the background. That looks about right. See, I have a little bit of glue showing out from behind, but that's okay. You may need to hold it in place for a while until it sticks. 